the sailor just let us pass without breaking my neck. That's good. Ew, I'm finally out of that cabin. I have to admit, this isn't quite what I was expecting. It's less spacious out here than I thought it would be, and this is the most luxurious accommodation. Yes, indeed. Kazuma Sama was being sent on, his, on the study tour by the government. That's why he was being put in a first class cabin. Even still, this is about twice as large as my accommodation in steerage. Really? That must be awful. Oh! Look over there. That's another crewman keeping watch, and he looks enormous even if he's sitting down. Look at that man spread. <laughs> the door next to him leads to the second class accommodation. I suppose he's making sure that no one comes in here who shouldn't. I suppose. Like people in handcuffs? Nanohoto san, you look like a little boy visiting a toy shop for the first time. I would have thought you'd be used to the ship by now. We've been at sea for two weeks already. Well, yes, but the thing is, I was inside Kazuma's trunk when I first came aboard. And ever since then, I've been shut up inside that little wardrobe. It must have been a very trying time for you. Please, don't give me that pitying look. Yeah, I mean, Kazuma had it worse, right? What the heck is that? A mouse trap? A mouse trap? Are there rats on the ship? Ah, a trap for catching mice. Yes, we have plenty of those back home in Japan. Although they seem to be using a lump of chalk or something as bait. Let me see. Yes, I think that's what is called cheese. It's made from the milk of cows. Cheese? I wonder what that tastes like. You can't eat it, Naruhodo-san. The trap will snap shut on your fingers. Really? But... Uh, I suppose you're right. You weren't actually going to try it, were you? All I've had to eat for the past couple of weeks is Kazuma's leftovers. You don't know how angry I've been in that wardrobe. Poor you. I'll find a little snack for you later. Oh, Susato, thank you. Thank you. Now I'm kind of hungry too. <laughs> Caution. There's a bell. What do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape. What? A pleasing shape. That's the emergency alarm. It's best not to touch it. Oh, an alarm. It says press only in times of emergency. It looks as though it says alarm bells ringing all over the ship and brings the vessel to a complete stop. Oh, this is... I have to... What are you doing, Naruto san You mustn't touch it! But this is an emergency situation. Just look at these handcuffs. You know for well that's not what the alarm is for. If you were to bring this vessel to a standstill for no good reason, you'd be in an even worse situation. <sighs> I wish everything would just stop, this ship included. If you have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect anyone else. <laughs> but what fun is that? And who lives next door? First class cabin number one. Yes, that's our cabin. Oh! Not our cabin, it's Kazuma-sama's! Sorry? Your accommodation is confined to the wardrobe inside the cabin. You know how to make a stowaway feel small, don't you? As small as the wardrobe I've been calling home. These cabins are the finest on the ship. My own cabin and steerage is number 539, by the way. 500? How many cabins are there? Then, who, who lives next door? Oh, that's where we need to go. This is it. 
This is the cabin next to ours, the one the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazuma-sama wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Perhaps, perhaps whoever's in the cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. No, 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 no. Oh. Oh, that uniform is a little bit a tad too small for you. Oh, um... Excuse me, we uh, need to get inside this cabin here. The sailor's eyes speak volumes. They're clearly saying keep out. That's what I wrote on the sign we put over the wardrobe doors. Although this man's version is definitely more effective. It doesn't look like he's going to let us pass. Mm, that's a problem. Okay, let's investigate first then, I guess. Shall we talk to him first? This looks like a plan of the SS Boria. I chose each deck. Look. The Boria is a large-scale steamship with a triple-skinned hull. What a marvel of engineering! Well, it's been playing on my mind for a while now, actually, but... How is it that such a huge lump of metal just doesn't just sink to the bottom of the ocean? Oh, that's really quite simple, Naruhodo-san. It is? Well, consider the Japanese archipelago. The islands of Japan? Yes, they're not metal, but they are enormous lumps of earth, many, many times larger than this ship. And they don't sink, do they? They've been floating happily on the sea since the gods created them. Well, I suppose so. There's a huge book on top of the table there, and there's a pen next to it. A pen? Yes, that looks like the ship's log. Shall we have a little look through it? The writing is so neat and precise, every detail about the voyage has been meticulously recorded. Hmm, you wouldn't expect a rough and ready sailor to have such beautiful handwriting. And nothing, no reaction at all. I thought he might appreciate the compliment. Maybe he doesn't understand us. I'm not sure that rough and steady is much of a compliment, Naruhodo-san, even to a sailor. Anyway, no, I was talking about his handwriting. Last night's log is mostly blank. Presumably that means there was nothing to report. What? There was a murder. How, how is there nothing to report? Were you slicking off? That's the way to the second class area of the ship. Is something wrong? I was thinking about making a run for it, just for a moment. Things aren't exactly going well for me. I might be wrong, but I imagine the moment you reach the handle of the door, that burly seaman would surely shoot you dead. Yeah, probably. Oh dear, I'm sorry. Perhaps I went a little too far there. No, I started it with my talk of running away. And there's no way I could run away while Kazuma's death remains a mystery anyway. Exactly. We need to... bring... him justice. Um, excuse me, but uh, could I ask you something? You, you little stowaway murderer. That wasn't a good start, was it? Alright, let me try instead. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask you something? You, you little third last lady's maid. <laughs> Holy! Oh... We seem to have caught the sailor on a bad day, Sasa-san. I am no sailor. My mother gave me a name. I am senior crewman Bifus Stroganov. 
Phew, the best thing is just to avoid eye contact, I think. Uh, Mr. Stroganoff, about the first class cabin area. Here we are in finest part of Buria steamship for very important persons. What sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret, many important persons. That is why I am always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing. Amazing, yeah, you're, you are very good at guarding this place <laughs> with your big muscles. But somehow I left stupid stowaway inside. Oh. I want to pick you up and throw you in ocean, but Throganov is not animal. Thank you? Are you always talking about yourself in third person? If I may, I was wondering... Is the cabin next to Mr. Azogi's currently occupied? Uh... <laughs> I don't know Russian. Um, Satasan, did you understand that? It sounded like da. Oh, okay. I think it's probably Russian for yes. Or no. <laughs> Wait, no. No is yes, right? Genius. It is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Wait, how did Sholmes get into it then? Well, it sounds like there's somebody in the next door cabin at least. Yes, it's tantalizing. Could you tell us who's traveling in the cabin next to Mr. Azogis? His name is Mr. Grimsby... Grimes by Roy Lott. He's a very important western gentleman. A western gentleman? Do not think about it. He has nothing to do with murder of student boy. How can you be so sure about that? Mr. Roy Lott is authentic western gentleman. Not like you. <laughs> that a man would have no interest in lowly student from insignificant Far East Islands. That was harsh. Could you tell us when Mr. Roylot came aboard? That is not your business. Come to think of it, even though we've been at sea for two weeks now and I've been in Kazma's cabin the entire time, I've never once heard anything from the next door cabin or even felt like there's anyone there. Well, presumably, then, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first-class cabins... He must be rather important, is that right? That is not your business. Um, are you on watch here all the time, Seaman Stroganov? Da, all the time. So criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is sad about student boy. Why didn't you write anything in your log? Were you on watch last night as well? Of course. Did he just... Is he just thinking, oh, it's just some random student from the Far East, so he's not important at all? So he didn't write it down? Is he, like, a racist? And did you notice anything at the time? Anything unusual? N yet? I think? <laughs> uh, Satasan, did you understand that? It was clearly a uh, no. I saw nothing unusual, nothing at all. And you didn't hear any strange noises or sense anything was wrong in some way? I said no! Oh god, he's so defensive about, about this, so I think he saw something. Is this sorry? I'm not so sure. I could have sworn that he wouldn't catch my eye for a moment there. This is enough, I cannot say more now. Oh. It is time for me to report to Captain. You must return to cabin. Yes, alright. 
Block head to second class area, staying locked at all times. You escape when the lobster whistles on top of the mountain, or as English say, when the pigs fly. Yes, I understand. Good. Now we can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. Wait, we haven't been investigating properly? What have we been doing then? Okay, we can look at the logbook again. I think that's the only thing we can... Oh, we can go inside, right? Or at least knock on the door. That book on top of the table really is huge. There's a pen with it too. Yes, I'm sure that's the ship's log. Yes. We already read through it. <laughs> Why can we look at that again? Look here. Last night's log is mostly blank. Exactly. Oh, that's it? Nothing new? Okay. This is it. This is the cabin next to ours. The one the ventilator connects to. Maybe whoever's in this, in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. No answer. We're out of luck, it seems. There's no one in there to help with our inquiries. How annoying. Ah! What was that? It came from inside the cabin. Such a high-pitched scream. It must have been a woman. Oh, sorry. Stand aside. I'm about to break the door down. <laughs> okay, Mr. Jones. I shan't be stopped. When the fit is on me, I revel in kicking doors off the hinges. Please, wait, Mr. Jones. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. It doesn't? Then how the deuce can I dispatch this muscular urge? What break can I kick? I, I think we should go in. There's no time to think about stress re relief. Western gentleman? This man looks Russian to me. We, we heard a woman scream. A woman, don't be absurd. As you can see, there's nobody but me in this cabin. True, this old man does appear to be the only person in here. But in that case, who just screamed? Get out, all of you, now! Please excuse the intrusion, but you are Mr. Grimes by Royal Lot, I believe. Yes, that's me. And you are? I'm the one and only, the actual Herlock Sholmes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. <laughs> I am a great detective among great detectives, one who adorns the covers of popular magazines, no less. So I assure you, you may trust me completely. <laughs> the man uses that magazine like a business card. A detective? Hmm, I do not trust detectives. We distinctly heard a scream emanating from within these walls. But there wouldn't appear to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So, might I be so bold as to ask you to open that small traveling gate? <laughs> Do you think a woman is in there? What? Don't be stupid. How could anyone fit in a small trunk like that? Well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk. <laughs> Don't look at me. Ah. Oh my, did, did you see that, Mr. Naruhodo? Yes. The case just shook.
Leave now, otherwise I call the steward. Why do you have the scissors? <laughs> um, so this is Kazuma's neighbor, Mr. Grimes by Roylot. There's no doubt about it. This strange Russian man is hiding something. I couldn't agree more. Let's see if we can find some clues before that burly sailor returns. Oh, we're just staying here. Genius. Ah! Uh, Herlock? Mr. Sholmes? What are you doing? Okay, looks almost the same. And there's the ventilator grill. To Kazuma's room. There's only one cup, so he was presumably... So we can't deduce that he wasn't alone. And there's a plate on the floor. Makes me think he has a, some sort of pet. A dog. An illegal dog. What do you think you're doing? <sighs> this is my cabin, get out! Can we just have a quick look inside your traveling case, perhaps? No! Ah, uh, what a pity. I think we are out of luck. I think you're right. There doesn't appear to be anything more we can do. I agree, but there may be something, someone else who can help. Perhaps that great detective could get somewhere with Mr. Roylot. Okay. Okay, we can't do any anything. Traveling case. Okay, since we're talking to Mr. Sholmes, maybe let's talk to this gentleman. Mr. Roylot, we'd like to talk to you about something. No. Oh. I do not want to talk. Leave my cabin now. Uh, this is going terribly. We're not getting anywhere here. I agree, but there may be someone else. Okay. Fine. Mr. Sholmes, any, any insights? Um, do you have a moment, please, Mr. Sholmes? You need only address me as Sholmes. That's what I just did, isn't it? Well, uh, Mr. Sholmes, what were you doing in there? Why, I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed, I was contemplating our sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you would need to call my great powers of detection into service. Oh my goodness, he's so full of himself. Oh, and it would seem that the hour is upon us now, the time has come. Am I mistaken? Well, um, no actually, you're spot on for once. Observe closely. Our Russian host in this cabin, Mr. Roylot, is clearly trying to hide something. And do you know what is the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Why? The truth, of course. Though it should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively for the Russians. Right! Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret he got so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Oh, yes! Please! Well then, what you are about to see may well astound you. I'll be the judge of that. For I am about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great deduction to my case. Is that why it's called the great attorney? Ace Attorney? 
Could this man, man be a more ha hackneyed portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? What? I mean, his name doesn't exactly sound Russian. From time to time, it occurs to me. Is the fellow dubious on account of his Russianness, or Russian on account of his dubiousness? I, I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you, or anyone. That's right, and Mr. Sholmes? I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but I once read... It is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. It biases the judgment. Exactly! Thank you, Sasatis. I must have complete silence. What? what are you doing? Why are you peering at my face like that? Ah, oh, just as I thought. Yes, I have quite made up my mind now. I <laughs> made up my mind now. I hope you don't deduce something ridiculous as last time when you were saying I was a Russian spy. Hmm? There can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Mr. Roylott, I have reached two incontrovertible conclusions. What? What do you mean? Number one. Your true identity is that of a villain. Using those fears, you are about to end the existence of something most dear. What? Are you not? Huh? And number two, the other conclusion I have drawn. You are... At this very moment, no less in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beard, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize you have been discovered. Does it not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not all of a sudden. I never imagined I would witness one of Mr. Shorm's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction. Nothing can deceive Mr. Sholmes. In a single glance, he can deduce all there is to know about a person. W what? What ineffable twaddle. <laughs> oh yes, I've read about it countless times in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And now I've experienced the astounding impact of his great deduction firsthand. This is like a dream come true. I can hardly believe it, but all the color has drained from Mr. Roylott's face. It looks like somehow both of Mr. Shum's conclusions were right. How? How could you? How could I possibly know such a thing? Would you wish to say? Very well then. I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. I do cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Put plainly, let us walk through my deductions together. The great deduction. The game is afoot. Old man's identity. So, the dubious looking Russian is the Roylot, obviously what catches the eye in the first place. <laughs> is the enormous pair of shears in your head? I love this! I love it right now. Now we ask ourselves, what could, po what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer is, of course, is staring us in the face. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you sport. <laughs> what? What? Are you serious? Now moving on. This is completely wrong, isn't it? The question then begs this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Roylott? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Ugh. 
regard, if you will, this morning's newspaper, in particular the fascinating front page article. Wait. He's a revolutionary? <laughs> Is that what you're going to say? It looks nothing like the revolutionary. Shomes, he looks nothing like it. Which it would appear you have read also, Mr. Roylot. And sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. In translation, the headline reads, reads Revolutionary Vilan Bolshevik flees Russia via Shanghai. If you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article possesses, possesses an extremely copious beard. Having noted the article yourself, you decided to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the fearsome Russian revolutionary himself, Vilen Borshevik. Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand. He said the same thing about me, is that even... Is that even true, I wonder? I don't know. A revolutionary is on the run. Wrongdoing. Now, as for my second conclusion. You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime, over there. Oh yes, Mr. Roylot. Taken unaware, as people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see. Ah. And I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. The answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls. The proof of the crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, the traveling case. It is time, I think, that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. No, I refuse! What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation... A young lady, perhaps. <laughs> What's light enough to fit there? A dog lady? Is that it? A dog lady? D d don't be absurd! And what, pray, would be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me. Oh no! <laughs> Don't tell me it's the ballerina who disappeared from Shanghai. Please, Russia via Shanghai. No way. No way. We're not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless coup doyle? Coop Doyle? What the heck is that? Betrays you. Once again, we need to only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your traveling case is equally be found in the pages of this newspaper. For there is another most sim stimulating article. If we turn from the fleeing revolutionary to the back page. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavitch Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us to but one conclusion. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlova. Kidnapping of a young ballerina. Thus concludes Herlock Sholm's great deduction of this Russian enigma, Elementsky. Is he for real? Is that true? <laughs> Is this all true? Is this other sound? That wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories are full of Mr. Sholm's brilliant deductions, you know? But that did seem a little different somehow. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Sholmes, could you come over here a moment? 
Pray, what can I do for you? It's about your detections. Would you mind? Not at all. Go on. Well, to start with, there's the newspaper article. I think we had the same discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other! <laughs> ah, yes, I recall our discussion earlier. And at that time, I believe I told you... That a man is a revolutionary, well able to revolutionize his own appearance. But <laughs> why would he change his appearance to look like exactly the same or something? He could have chosen to change his beard, for example. In fairness to Mr. Sholmes, Mr. Roylott does look more like this man than you do. <laughs> That's not the point. And another thing, the part of, about him abducting the ballerina. Indeed, a truly startling revelation. At first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just as a first glance, it is too small, clearly. You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old child into that case, even if you pushed really hard. I don't suppose the missing ballerina is a five-year-old child, is she? You mean you don't know? No, the young lady is 15. No, I didn't know. How could I? Hmm, well, if she's 15, then 10 years worth of her would be poking out from the <laughs> case. Some years ago, I read something pertinent, I believe. A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain lightness in their bodies. Vinegar? For such a sour bunch, it would surely be in a simplicity itself to contort oneself into the confines of such a small case. Oh dear, you might be thinking of contortionists in a circus, Mr. Sholmes. Ugh, this whole thing is turning into a circus. <laughs> Mr. Narohodo, something's occurred to me about Mr. Sholmes' deductions just now. I think his powers of observation are, well, magical. His eyes cut to the heart of the matter almost instantly. It's just where he directs his attention and his logic that seem a little off. Your idea of a little may be a little off itself, Mr. Sato. <laughs> I am so sarcastic. It's just one or two key words in his deductions that seem to let him down. So I was wondering if we might perhaps tactfully switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Switch some key words in his deductions? Yes, but very tactfully. I feel sure if we could do that, we'd unlock the true genius of Mr. Sholmes' great deduction. Precisely the thought that was going through my own mind. This man is a lot of work. At times I wonder how anyone puts up with me. <laughs> it's not that funny. And you, my good fellow? Sorry? Take a moment to look at your wrists. My wrists? Oh! Ah, what? Where are your handcuffs? Huh? How, how did... I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me in our dance of deduction. I don't believe it. Mr. Sholmes, you are a marvel. And don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrists when we are finished. <laughs> Why? I'm not worried. In fact, I'd rather stay like this. So, let us begin. Herlock Sholmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Course correction. Okay. Old man's identity. What am I supposed to do here? Is this like a cross-examination? Oh. I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? 
I doubt that's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Roylott, either. Which means, I suppose, that the deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch a key word here, Naruhoto-san, and see if it helps matters. Alright, but how? I think we should start by taking a long, hard look at Mr. Roylott. I wonder if it's really his beer that he intended to use those shears on. Exactly. If we do manage to find something that seems to fit the sense of Mr. Shom's deduction better. Then what? Then I'll leave the rest in your capable hands, Naruhoto-san. Why am I the only one to do something about this? Well, anyway, let's see if there's anything we could even use to switch around in that last sentence. What exactly was Mr. Roydot really going to use those enormous shears for? Okay. What was the old man really about to cut? Head? Why would he cut the head? That doesn't make any sense. Nothing makes sense here. What? The head? There are only two things to... Present. Oh. There are only two things to present here. The beard or the hat. <laughs> and we just determined it can't be the beard. But why can it be the hat? What the heck? Coat buttons? Oh, coat buttons. That makes much more sense. Coat buttons. That's a very small area area to point to. That's very tricky. Yes. For years, you have lived in the icy climate of your homeland, wearing the thin, thick coat of for warmth. For so many years, in fact, something terrible has happened. You've forgotten how to undo buttons. Now, in the warmth of this cabin, you find yourself sweltering and desperate to remove your outer layer. Am I for real? <laughs> Am I for real? That deduction was wanting in every way. Yes, I was wanting you to hear it. I'm quite proud of it. If I find myself wanting never to have heard it, I'm quite pained by it, in fact. Oh, sorry. I try again. <laughs> okay, that didn't make any sense. What was this bearded Russian planning to cut off with those enormous shears? If it wasn't his beard, what was the man of thinking cu of cutting? Can I like move around? Uh, oh! 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 Game, you didn't tell me I could like rotate like this. What the heck is this? Golden locks? Oh my god, this is a woman. Oh god. <laughs> this is a woman in disguise. The ballerina is the ballerina. What the? What's this? It looks like a cascade of stunning golden locks. No, 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 the color is not the point. The point is, what's it doing on the back of Mr. Roylott's head? And how is, growing, how is it growing out from underneath his thick black hair? Well, yes, that's true, so it's stunningly beautiful and stunningly surprising. Something's definitely not right here. Yes! I'm doing the finger snapping part. You were on the verge of using the shears to cut away the golden locks you sport. Indeed, you have identified a precise detail I was intending to expose. Why didn't you say so? Such lush golden hair certainly does not befit an old man. You are not a man at all, you are a woman, and judging by the length and sheen of your hair, was still very much in her youth. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Wait, oh no! <laughs> If I only had managed to cut off my hair, no one would have suspected. 
The question then begs is this, why would you desire to rid yourself of these magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. I'm sure it needs no further clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolution. No, it's the article about the ballerina. Well, that was a shock. I had no idea that old man was really a young woman in disguise, did you? What? Why are you staring at me like that? Yes, it was a surprise, Naruhoto-san. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? You look like you're in your element as you dance around the room, deducing the facts with Mr. Sholmes. I'm just doing what we agreed. I'm not having fun or anything. Oh, come on, don't be coy. This is strictly business, no? Yes, yes, I understand. Say no more. Well, anyway, let's focus on this part of Mr. Sholmes' deduction, shall we? The evidence. Mm -hmm. He, or rather she, can't possibly be, his, be this merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because the deduction as a whole has taken a different direction now. Yes. Let's switch the evidence for something else, something that fits the facts. For some reason, this woman needed to try to hide her true identity. I feel as though I've either read or heard about a young woman in a situation like that recently. Alright. Okay, it's this one. Yes! The evidence that reveals to try true identity is of course the article about the ballerina. That's right, you've hit the nail on the head. Renowned prima ballerina of the Novavitch Ballet disappears from Shanghai. It would appear we are finally able to address you by your true name. Wait, is Mr. Sholmes testing me on purpose? Yes, because your true identity is that of Novavitch Ballet's prima ballerina. Ms. Nikolina Pavlova. Ah, 